Okay, so um, welcome to this uh, discussion about 20 years of SOAS Taiwan Studies. Uh, my name is David Fell and I'm the co-director of the SOAS Centre of Taiwan Studies. Um, and Irene, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, hi, I'm Irene and I'm the president of the SOAS Diplomatic Society. And, um, and Irene is also one of our former uh, students, so she's seen the Taiwan Studies program from a different angle um, to me. So, Irene, you had some questions for me. Yes. Uh, so I thought we could start with uh, something very basic. So uh, how did the Center for Taiwan Studies come about and what was the purpose of its creation? So the Taiwan program started in 1999. Um, and I can't claim to be the founder because uh, <laughs> that was the year I came to SOAS as a student. So uh, uh, first year PhD student. Um, and I didn't really know we had a Taiwan Studies program until quite late in, the, in my first year, uh, because it was very quiet. There were maybe a, a handful of events, and maybe a, and we had, in those days we had an annual conference, um, maybe, or maybe a conference every two years perhaps. Um, but it was only in my second year of my PhD that I became more aware of what was going on, because they created our first Taiwan Studies course. Uh, and I audited um, uh, about a few weeks of that, of that course. So, um, but I think, um, though I think there were a number of reasons why they wanted to, to do that. I think the, uh, in the mid to late 1990s, interest in Taiwan was growing. There were more academic publications, um, and uh, people were become, starting to become interested in Taiwan because of economic success and Taiwan's democratization. So I was really lucky to be there at the right time. So uh, uh, arriving exactly, almost exactly 20 years ago, and so how did you get more involved? Um, I became more involved um, in the f uh, towards the end of my PhD. So okay. in 2002 I started uh, doing a little bit of teaching on, the, um, on our Taiwan course. Yeah. And I uh, joined one of the events. Uh, so that was my first teaching experience, teaching, on, uh, teaching a little bit of Taiwan politics, a little bit of Taiwan uh, modern history. Okay. Because uh, 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 one of the teachers had left. Okay. So uh, uh, that was how, how I became uh, a little bit more involved. And then in 2003, uh, I got a, um, a postdoc job uh, at, um, at the center. <laughs> so I was um, doing a little bit of teaching, uh, and I had a chance to get my, uh, my research publication started. So uh, basically since 2003, I've been... Um, working full time at SOAS. Okay, great. So since you've witnessed the creation or the start of the Center for Taiwan Studies, uh, what are, in your opinion, the major milestones and achievements? Yes, that's a really difficult question <laughs> uh, because there's there's, there's so, so many, many. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll try and be as, as brief as I as I can. Um, I think the first thing I have to um, talk about is the teaching program okay. because um, most Taiwan Studies programs don't really pay much attention to teaching. But at the SOAS we're quite different. So we started off with one course, a year-long course that taught a little bit of everything. A little bit of society, history, economics and politics. Um, and then gradually over time we expanded the Taiwan courses um, so that um, we now have more Taiwan courses than any other university in Europe or, uh, or North America. We have an mm -hmm. um, undergrad politics of Taiwan course, which you took. Yes. Uh, okay. A, a year-long <laughs> postgraduate course on Taiwan politics. Um, we have a comparative Taiwan politics course, Taiwan film, Taiwan culture and society. Uh, and of course, we have, I think, the only course of um, spoken Taiwanese, oh. which elementary uh, hockey, which is available <laughs> for undergrads and, uh, and postgrads. Um, and because we have so many courses, that, um, that also meant that we could create a, a Master of Taiwan Studies that we created back in 2005. Okay. And we're still thinking about um, what can we do, how can we expand our courses? Um, because I think this is something quite, quite special. I think there's only two universities in the world that have Taiwan Studies degrees outside of Taiwan. So it's just okay. SOAS and uh, uh, Texas Austin. Okay. Um, so uh, I think that's a key achievement. A second one I would, I would mention is creating the European Association of Taiwan Studies okay. that, we, that we created back in 2004. Um, and 
it's now it's the key event in the European Tunnel Studies uh, calendar. Um, it's, um, we created that at SOAS and, and now it runs very, very uh, well. It's also very good for our students uh, because every year a uh, number of SOAS students, both PhDs and um, uh, master, even undergraduate students, will give presentations at the, okay. at the European um, uh, conference. So uh, currently we're just a few months away from the next conference and I think we've got um, th um, three of our undergraduates and postgrads will be presenting. Okay. So I think that was really quite special. I think yeah. um, it, um, and it's gone on to, to do a lot of things. So for example, uh, they have uh, scholarships from the European Association now. And I think it's really helped promote tunnel studies uh, beyond the UK. So I think that was, that was quite special. Um, the, the next thing I would mention is publications. Yeah. And, uh, back in 2009, we created a, um, a Tower Study book series. Um, and many of the books that we publish in this series we use for teaching. Okay. Uh, we've now published uh, 27 books since 2009. Um, That's a lot. And um, it's, uh, it's really great. I mean, it's, it means that we have um, some of my favorite events are book launches, yes. where uh, the authors come and talk about their, uh, their work. Um, and I try and look for book projects that will be useful for our teaching. Okay. So um, <laughs> one of them that my, uh, my colleague uh, published yeah. back in 2011 was uh, Tower Democracy, Economic and Political uh, Challenges. Uh, um, and it's also nice if we can do paperback books, which we don't uh, uh, do enough of. Okay, um, I think the other thing that is wonderful for, uh, mm -hmm. in our program in terms of achievements is our events program. So when I first started, maybe we had two or three events a year as a, yes. when I was a student. Um, but nowadays we have between 60 and 70 events. Um, so right, yeah. um, uh, that's right, yeah. So again, that's more than any other yes. European or American uh, university. But of course, um, and some events are particularly special. So uh, if I was going to choose one event yes. that was particularly special, then I would choose uh, the, the second World Congress of Taiwan Studies that okay. we held when you were first year PhD student back in June of uh, 2015. Yes. The, the biggest ever conference, world, um, the biggest ever Taiwan Studies conference in Europe. Okay. Um, and we had something like 70 or 80 speakers coming to SOAS over uh, three days. Oh, wow. um, so uh, we still kind of have fond memories of those crazy three, uh, three days. <laughs> Uh, not only did we have academic panels, but we had um, a film screening and we had a, um, a concert where Li Xiangxia uh, gave his first, uh, I think his first ever UK um, a concert. That was very, very, very special. In, in terms of the kind of the long-term uh, conferences or events we've organised, uh, I would probably want to highlight a couple. Yes. One of them is our film week, <laughs> which we run mm -hmm. uh, every... Um, uh, February of the Reading Week, yes. and that's allowed us to bring some quite amazing uh, Taiwanese uh, film directors, actors, producers, screen uh, script writers, and, th and that was the event that we just held last week. Yes. Uh, we've we've done that now for six years, okay. and I think, it's, uh, and again, we try and do uh, screen films that are kind of relevant for our courses. So it's very um, political, social movements. Yes. Um, and then lastly, I would probably um, highlight our summer school, which we run um, uh, every summer, mm -hmm. usually in late June or early uh, July. Uh, and we kind of bring in uh, speakers, um, we have film screenings, but it's also a great opportunity for our students to actually give presentations about their um, dissertation projects. Yes. So long as they have a Taiwan focus. Yes. But we, um, we do these as... Um, uh, open events, so a lot of, of participants will come from other universities or other uh, European countries. So it's a very special um, um, moment. Great. And uh, last year, I think, was the, the year you started the program for Taiwan Indigenous Studies. Mm -hmm. So what was the, the rationale behind it? Yes, I mean, um, we had events about Taiwan's Indigenous people occasionally for a, a, a number of, of years. Okay. Um, but it was something that I always felt that we should uh, give a little bit more attention to. I thought that uh, indigenous uh, studies had been neglected in mainstream Taiwan studies. 
Um, but for me, it seemed that it was something that, so long as we could link it with the kind of things that we do. So, so long as we had political science, um, speakers, literature, uh, history, film, uh, social movement topics, then we could kind of uh, link it with the type, kind of things we taught. Um, I think it's, I think Taiwan's indigenous people, indigenous people are something that does really make Taiwan special. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think those, um, the fact that Taiwan is the, the Austronesian homeland. So it means that Taiwan has um, um, links to uh, people in Madagascar, uh, New Zealand, Hawaii, uh, both in terms of culture and languages. Uh, so I think that's a, a key element in Taiwan's uh, public diplomacy. It's, it's a way of kind of breaking out of uh, its international isolation. Yes. So. Um, I th I, I'm quite pleased that I, I wanted to do this for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also quite interesting um, working with a, um, uh, a Taiwanese museum, because they're the ones, it, okay. they, it's the Sri Museum uh, of Formosan Aborigines that funds this, uh, this, this project. Um, so that's a little bit different from working with a, um, um, a government organization. Yes. But it's, I would say, um, um, it's something that I'm quite excited about in terms of, um, again, it's a publication project. So we have events, but I'm hoping to have a, uh, a new textbook on okay. um, issues related to contemporary Taiwanese indig indig indigenous peoples. Okay. Uh, and again, it's, um, I feel that there's a bit of a gap in the literature there. Mm -hmm. And then maybe one day we can actually run a, a, Taiwan, a course on Taiwan's indigenous peoples. Yes. And um, I think I'll definitely give that a try in one of our future uh, summer school. Do you think the studies for Taiwan that, they, that we do in SOAS have improved people-to-people um, -people exchanges between the UK and Taiwan? Uh, I think for, um, uh, for sure, I think it's, uh, we can see the impact in, in many areas. And this is, this is perhaps why um, um, Rob Ash, who was the former director, won the, um, it's called the Republic of China Friendship Award. Um, I think he was just the second person from the UK to win that medal. Yes. Uh, and and uh, I think the justification was his role in developing UK-Taiwan academic uh, links. I think so we can see this in many ways. One way is also uh, the number of Taiwanese academics that we bring into yes. um, uh, to SOAS um, and the way that they engage with our, uh, our students and, and share their, uh, their research. Because I would say that Pretty high proportion of our speakers are from Taiwan. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Not necessarily uh, based in Taiwan, but I think generally, mm -hmm. often they uh, they are. Um, and I think another thing I would I would talk about I would mention here is um, academic exchange programs. Yes. Um, uh, many of our conferences or book uh, projects um, are collaborative with Taiwanese uh, universities. Uh, so, for example, we had a project on migration to and from Taiwan okay. that became a, a book called Migration to and from Taiwan that um, was the product of collaboration between Taiwan's uh, Zhongqing University and Zhongqing University. Okay. Um, and we've also, we also had a project with, uh, also with, uh, let me see, with uh, Academia Sinica uh, okay. on Taiwanese political parties. Mm -hmm. Again, it led to a, a journal publication. So, um, that's really the way that we, uh, we work together. Often but we find a theme yes. and um, Taiwanese scholars to work with and, um, and we'll see if we can put together a conference and then a, a book publication. Okay. So many of the books that we publish in our series um, um, were presented in their first format um, at a conference at SOAS. Okay. Oh, that's really exciting. Mm. And so this is a bit more of a Fun question, but out of all the Taiwan-related courses you offer in SOAS, uh, which ones are your favorite? Yes. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure that um, uh, each of us will have a different answer yes. uh, to that, because um, I think the fact that we can teach courses uh, that are so close to uh, the things that we research um, is one of the, the attractions for working at SOAS. Mm -hmm. I think that you probably noticed how kind of excited we look in, in, in class. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> uh, and and I th um, because I study Taiwanese political parties, social movements, uh, elections, and I can spend um, 
something like 11, 12 weeks, uh, uh, kind of indulging in my favorite uh, topics and um, sh doing analysis together with students of uh, election advertising. Um, so I would definitely pick um, the, um, the two year-long time politics classes. Okay. Uh, they are particularly close to, um, uh, to my heart. But I think I also actually really enjoy our Northeast Asia politics class, yes. which is a comparative one. Um, and I suppose I like that one because it's a course where um, I can get to know, I learn a lot from the class. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, I learn a lot about Japan and, and South Korea. And I kind of force those Japan and South Korea specialists to get to know about uh, yes. Taiwan. Um, so I really look forward to my teaching. And, yes. <laughs> um, and I think that would be um, one, I, mean, I often meet colleagues at other universities uh, and they often really hate teaching because uh, it's often uh, quite distant from their research okay. um, and, um, but in contrast in my classes I can actually use my own um, work, I can yes. use my own publications so, yes. and then I get a different set of feedback, that, that's, that's very special. That's really great. And um, finally, do what are the projects to come for the Center of Taiwan Studies in the next year? Um, well, 2019 looks very exciting, okay. uh, I think for a, um, a number of, uh, of reasons. I think one, of course, is, is the fact that we are coming uh, towards our 20th anniversary. Uh, and we're trying to think about what we should do to, um, uh, to celebrate. So, so in a way, our conversation today is, is kind of like our, 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 the start of our yes. uh, celebrations of our 20th anniversary. <laughs> and probably I would also want to do um, a similar kind of conversation um, with uh, Bob Ash, the, the founder of the centre, um, because I, I also want to know how it started. <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, um, because I, um, uh, I was kind of like, I was an outsider in those, those, those early days. Um, why is a person who specializes in Chinese uh, agricultural economics create a Taiwan um, uh, program? Um, that's something I really want to, uh, to know. So I'm going to try and push him in on that. Um, I might also try and... One idea I've got is to try and get together people who were there at the first um, Taiwan Studies Conference in the summer of, okay. of um, um, 2000 and get them to talk about how they view Taiwan over the last two decades. I think that would be really quite interesting. It's one of, one of my plans. Um, when would this uh, conference take place? That I'm not sure. Um, um, it could be... Um, uh, it would make sense, I think, to do it in the autumn okay. of um, uh, maybe a way of starting the, uh, the 20th year. Yes. Um, so. Um, I would need to find out who were, who were the speakers yes. um, and uh, who's still uh, around because um, some of them probably have retired yes. uh, now but I think it should be quite special um, but in terms of this academic year I think we yes. still have um, some pretty exciting events uh, coming up we still have a couple more uh, events on our Taiwan Indigenous uh, yes. project for yes. example we have this documentary about um, uh, armies uh, hip hop oh. on the last day of this term. Uh, that <laughs> okay. one I'm, I'm um, really looking uh, forward to. Um, also on the last week of term, we're going to have an event looking at um, analysis of Taiwanese mus music. Okay. Um, okay. And I'm hoping to get um, a a couple of um, former SOA students to talk about their uh, research on Taiwanese um, music. Oh, so that should be quite. Um, quite exciting because it seems to be a topic that we don't have a course on Taiwan music. Yes. But when we run events on this uh, on this theme, they tend it's to be very very popular. Very popular. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, um, and it's not quite as powerful as K-pop for Korean studies. Yes. Um, but we meet a lot of students who first uh, pay attention to Taiwan through music. Yes. And, and lastly, I've got to mention the, the summer school because um, sure. I would say that nowadays the event that I most enjoy uh, in the academic calendar is the summer school mm, uh, because we can get some very special um, speakers. So for example, uh, this year, um, uh, Shen, Shen Ke Sha 
will be speaking about his um, uh, new documentary about Taiwanese marriage. Yeah, and, and what he did in this film called Love Talk is to follow, I think, eight or nine couples over seven or eight years and look at how uh, uh, the relationship develops <laughs> from their very, very extravagant wedding yes. ceremony, the yes. wedding photographs, to um, mm, as a kind of challenging relationship. So it's, 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 um, uh, it's and, but I think the other thing that I plan to do uh, is um, go back to our common theme about Taiwanese social movements. Okay. So we, we sh um, I'm going to get a couple of um, scholars to talk about this topic, but I'm also going to get the, um, the editor of the uh, online magazine, um, New Blue magazine, okay. um, who's produced an amazing uh, platform for the study of Taiwan politics and, and social uh, movements. So I'll get him to talk about his research, but also about um, uh, the practicalities of, of um, running um, an online platform, which yes. I, um, I think is also quite important for us to, to, to link Taiwan studies to these kind of practical things. So for example, in the past we invited um, Michael Cole, yes. um, who edits Taiwan Sentinel, to talk about what it's like uh, being a, um, a journalist in Taiwan. Um, <laughs> so I think those kind of things are, um, um, are quite special. Yeah, definitely. Um, maybe one more thing I would like to um, add um, is, uh, I know in the past we talked about a question of um, how can SOAS students get more yes, involved? Yes, exactly. Um, mm, and, and there I would say that um, so students who have an interest in Taiwan are really spoiled for choice. Yes. Uh, because uh, you have something like um, 65 to 75 events, and the events are very, very diverse. So there must, there's always going to be something, um, regardless of what department you're in. So um, I come along to events, um, and these kind of events are really designed to supplement our uh, teaching courses. Yes. Um, so there will be things on... Um, um, international relations and, and diplomacy that, yes. that you focus on. So, for example, uh, next week we have a, um, a major uh, opposition uh, politician coming to talk about uh, his vision for uh, <laughs> resolving the China-Taiwan oh. uh, stalemate. Um, <laughs> um, and I think, sh um, I think this is one thing I really enjoy, kind of getting um, practitioners Either okay. maybe cultural yes. practitioners yes. or political practitioners. Mm -hmm. So, for example, sometimes when uh, we do student surveys and ask, what did you most enjoy? Often they will say, uh, it's meeting former foreign ministers. Mm -hmm. Like, you're going to go meet a foreign minister tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> um, or meeting former prime ministers. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've had three Taiwanese former prime ministers, former ministers of defense, yes. foreign affairs come to, um, to so us. And last year you had the ambassador to the UK come and talk about uh, airspace. Uh, that's, that's right, yes. Um, and of course we've also had uh, the former uh, UK uh, representative to Taiwan. Yes. And he's, 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 he's come to SOAS a number of times. I think he was on that panel yes. um, as well. Mm. Um, students can also um, become our volunteers. Yes. Um, Often for our larger events, mm -hmm. uh, we, we really need a little bit of help. So I, I remember they do that? They can just, uh, just, just get in touch with, um, with Max okay. um, and just uh, let them know, yes. uh, uh, let him know. So for example, uh, last year our biggest event was um, uh, Long In uh, mm -hmm. uh, talk. Um, and we had a team of something like, I would say, uh, 12 volunteers. And that helped to make that um, event run smoothly. Yes. Much more smoothly Great. than the first time she came, which was yes. complete chaos. Um, so I think that would be um, a good way to get to know how the centre works. Um, and, uh, and Max, who's currently our project officer, is an example. He started getting involved as a, uh, as a volunteer. Yes. Um, and now he actually uh, works for us. And I think the events are also quite good places to network. Yeah. Um, so you can network with speakers, but I think also um, with uh, other members of the audience who are often uh, journalists or diplomats. Um, so um, I think getting, I think being known, I think is quite important when when we're looking to develop our um, postgraduate um, careers. And I think um, 
I think that is definitely an important element to being a SOAS student, joining these kind of events, um, not being afraid to um, speak, to, to raise questions, to talk to speakers. Um, and then it's quite possible that uh, within your year as a SOAS student, you can actually share a platform with uh, some of these speakers. So I remember um, it was the year, let me see, the year before um, you took my class. Okay. One of the students on our undergraduate Taiwan political class, um, he started, he, he knew nothing about Taiwan before, uh, and then he started becoming interested in term one. And that year we had a presidential election. Okay. So he, I think I told you this story before, but he, um, he asked, um, uh, could, I su could we support him going to Taiwan to watch the election? And we, we, and we managed to get a little bit of funds to, to help him go to Taiwan. Oh, wow. And he did real field work. As an undergraduate, oh, wow. not speaking Chinese. That's amazing. <laughs> um, and, um, and then when he came back, he wrote a fantastic paper, a term paper, on the election. Um, That's really exciting. And <laughs> then um, um, we had a post-election uh, public seminar. And um, he joined the uh, seminar as a speaker. So we had uh, um, <laughs> myself, a senior yeah. academic, and then yes. a, uh, a final year undergraduate. And then, uh, like quite a lot of our graduates, he ended up going to Taiwan to, uh, to work after he graduated, okay. which um, yeah. is quite a, um, I mean, that's one of the reasons why we often have um, pretty big alumni get-togethers in Taipei. Yes. Oh, uh, really? Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, and whenever I'm going to give a talk in, um, uh, in Taipei or in, ta in, in Taiwan, I'm also wondering who's going to turn up, which yeah, of my former students is going to turn up, and, yeah, and I always exciting. get some nice surprises, yeah. so I do make sure I kind of give people a bit of warning. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for answering my questions. It was a pleasure. <laughs>